Hi mystery resurfaced here, today, I'm going to explain a European fantasy, horror film tale of tales released in the year 2015, spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film is split into three stories, the first story revolves around the king and queen of a kingdom named Long Trellis. At the beginning we see the couple is carrying on with a cheerful life, but later we get to realize that the queen is experiencing an uncommon ailment, which won't ever permit her to turn into a mother. Because of this, the queen is always disturbed, seeing his wife in this state. The king brings the best specialists and doctors from all over the world, yet unfortunately not a solitary one of them can analyze the mysterious sickness inside her. Regardless of this, the king makes an honest effort to encourage his queen. One day he welcomes some carnival entertainers to the palace. Abruptly, the queen notification that one of the carnival entertainers is anticipating a child. Accordingly, she becomes jealous and begins crushing things, later, entering her chamber when the king learns about it. He visits her room and commits to go to any degree to tackle her concern. Late around evening time, a bizarre sorcerer shows up at the palace, guaranteeing that he can take care of the queen's pregnancy issue. Hearing this, the king advises him that many people have attempted before and failed. Although, the sorcerer is inflexible that the queen can bear a child, but it relies upon how far the king will go for his queen. The king answers the last extent. The sorcerer uncovers that he has long period of experience and knows a ton about nature. Besides, he says that nature should always be unstable, and that assuming the king wants a life, he should also forfeit one, however of his bizarre claims. The king and queen give him their full help. After this, the sorcerer starts to explain the process. Not the king should catch a sea monster whose heart will be utilized to fix the queen's ailment. Then an unadulterated and unmarried woman will set it up, which will be eaten by queen. Following these, the sorcerer guarantees that the queen will become pregnant. Hearing this, the king quickly agrees to hunt down the sea monster and starts the arrangements the next day the king sets out to hunt down the monster. He finds the monster in one of the rivers when the monster is sleeping, the king walks into the sea to go after it. He's ultimately effective in killing the monster but gets severely injured in the battle soon, he capitulates to his wounds, but before he does, he eliminates the monster's heart. The queen then, gets back to the palace. Covering the heart with a fabric later a house cleaner at the palace is viewed as unmarried and unadulterated. Subsequently, she's entrusted with preparing up the heart while cooking. She encounters odd sensations and unexpectedly becomes pregnant. Soon the queen consumes the heart. Lastly she becomes pregnant in the following scene. The servant and the queen give birth to their children. Simultaneously, the boys look to be the same age. The queen's son is named Elias, though the house cleaner child is named Jonah the film. Then, quickly advances to 16 years where the boys have now become grown-ups. The queen is carrying on with a cheerful existence with her son Elias as she imagines that she's been allowed a second opportunity at life. However, the two kids who were brought into the world around the same time and seem as though twins are not ordinary kids. As the sea monster is addressed by the white tone of their hair, they have a solid friendship and are very near to one another. The queen, then again, disdains their friendship. She tells her son that as a prince, he's not allowed to be friends with a housekeeper's son, Jonah. In spite of this, Elias overlooks his mother and keeps on meeting with Jonah. Afterward, we additionally get to realize that the boys have the ability to inhale underwater in an extraordinary manner. In the following scene, the queen warns her house cleaner that if she doesn't keep her son away from meeting Elias, she and her son will be removed from the kingdom regardless. The two appear to be indifferent and meet on. They went too far one day when Jonah wears Elias's clothing and goes to the queen when she finds reality, she decides to banish Jonah from the kingdom. Elias makes an endeavor to stop him. However, fails. Jonah then cuts a tree with his blade and water begins to flow from that point. 
He lets Elias know that as long as the water is perfect. He ought to know that he's alive, and when it becomes red, he ought to comprehend that Jonah's life is in risk in the wake of saying that he leaves. Elias checks the water routinely to check whether it has become red one day. The water becomes red, and he understands that something is off base to track down Jonah. He leaves the kingdom without informing his mother after a long hunt. Elias at last arrives at Jonah's home. He finds that Jonah has married a young lady. People there distinguish him as Jonah since they share similar facial highlights. Then he discovers that Jonah had gone to the woodland five days prior. And has not returned since Elias then goes out looking for Jonah. While the queen develops more worried about him left without any choices. She moves toward the sorcerer once more. However he inquires as to whether she believes that her boy should return. She should make a life penance the queen quickly acknowledges this proposition somewhere else. Jonah is seen harmed inside a cave, a flying monster, then, strikes and endeavors to kill him subsequent to hearing him shout Elias finds Jonah and kills the monster with his blade. Nonetheless, Elias is ignorant that the monster is, his own mother, Yet that was settled upon life for life in the last scene of the first story. Elias becomes the king of his kingdom and the story closes. Following this, we are shown the second story. The king and two older women, Emma and Dora, are the focal point of this story. The king is an incredibly licentious person who is continually encircled by ladies. He drinks vigorously constantly and is yet to find his queen. So, he has the impact and fortune to wed anybody he satisfies. Afterward, we're introduced with two older sisters who live close to the castle. One of them is named Dora, and the other is Emma. Dora is a wise and egotistical lady. While Emma is clear, they rarely take off from their home and are additionally unmarried. It's sure that they will die there alone, yet their voices sound unimaginably wonderful and young. One morning, the king hears Dora singing and quickly gets stricken by her voice. Therefore, he chooses to meet her soon the king moves toward their door to get a look of the lady in his mind. He imagines that Dora is young and beautiful when he knocks on the entryway. The sisters begin terrifying as they accept the king will lash out assuming if he learns about their appearance after thinking for some time. They at long last devise an idea and Dora asks the king to return after a week. So that she will be more comfortable. In the following scene, the sisters drive exceptionally difficult to make their fingers look young and wonderful. Dora covers her fingers with herbs, however they actually seem to be those of an older person. Yet then again, Emma had placed her finger in her mouth for a long time. As a result, it's looking very great and young. Today, seven days has passed, and it is the day for the king's visit when the king shows up there. Dora shows Emma's finger rather than her own now the king can't hold his feelings and accepts that he has tracked down his first love. However, the sisters become more stressed since, supposing that the king looks into their reality. He will in all probability kill them. After a ton of reasoning Dora proposes a condition she will lay down with the king provided that there is complete darkness. And, the king accepts it. In the following scene, Emma begins fixing Dora's body with glue so it might feel like a young girl's body. At midnight, one of the guards from the sanctuary comes to get Dora while there's darkness in the castle. The king lays down with Dora. But in the morning he understands that he spent the night with an old and terrible woman. In anger he arranges his guards to toss Dora out of the window. Fortunately she endures the fall in the forest. Dora observes sorcery as a witch, shows up there and tracks down her with her powers. The witch changes Dora into a beautiful young woman with long hair the following day. The king visits the forest for hunting and experiences passionate feelings for young Dora right away. He brings her to his palace and chooses to make her the queen. Dora doesn't have the foggiest idea how she transformed into a young girl. However she recalls her sister Emma. She welcomes Emma to her wedding, who is still in dismay about her new appearance when Emma asks about how she became young. 
Dora snidely answers that she stripped off her old skin. However, Emma believes it to be valid and visits an iron smith to strip her old skin in return for a necklace. The iron smith gives off an impression of being more dumb. He takes her to the forest, ties her against a tree, and strips all her skin in the following scene. Emma gets back to the palace in a delicate state, and she dies soon somewhere else. The magic that transformed Dora into a young girl doesn't keep going long. She begins to become old as her skin starts to overlay when she understands that she's turning old. She takes off from the palace. The story ends on a miserable note as Dora changes into her older self. Totally. Following this, we're shown the third story, which is also about a king. The king is of an unusual sort as his queen died quite a while in the past. He has an unmarried little girl named Violet, whom he has never truly cherished. One day, the king sees a parasite bug on his hand, which is sucking on his blood as opposed to smacking it away. The peculiar king simply allows it to feed on himself. Later he keeps the parasite in a glass box and permits it to feed from his blood consistently. As time goes on, the bug becomes tremendous. While, Violet who has become an excellent young lady, consistently dreams of a prince. However, the unreliable king could think often less about her, as he is always occupied with his parasite pet. Tragically, one day the parasite turns out to be sick and dies. This annihilates the king, so he strips its skin off and lets his little girl know that the opportunity has arrived to find a husband for her. He says that he will organize a contest and the person who wins it will get to marry her. On hearing this, Violet ends up being cheerful, but also a little annoyed as she wants to find a husband all alone. Regardless of this, she consents to the king's choice. Soon, declarations about the contest are made all through the kingdom. The king shows the parasite's skin in his castle and reports that whoever can figure the name of the bug will win. Many people attempt, however nobody can answer accurately because that bug has never developed that huge and old. All at once an odd-looking ogre shows up in the castle. He also wants to partake in the contest, and the king reluctantly permits him. The ogre then smells the skin and guesses the right answer. After hearing this a heartbroken Violet takes off to the rooftop and endeavors to end herself. However, the king calms her down by saying that he can't break his promise left with no other decision. Violet at long last agrees, in the following scene, the oak takes Violet far in the mountains. Where she cries for a long time, one day when he goes out hunting, she sees one more woman on a close by mountain. She asks for help and makes sense of the entire situation for her. The woman also identifies with her and vows to come for help the following day. The woman, alongside her family, shows up there to save Violet while they're crossing over the ogre shows up, however they effectively figured out to cut the rope and he falls. Some time later, the ogre tracks down the family and kills them one by one. He then, follows Violet into a cave and starts, embracing her. Violet, also shows off she cares, however the second he's diverted, she slits his throat him with a knife in the following scene. Violet returns to the castle with the ogres, cut off head and places it close to everybody. She then says this is the husband you picked and begins crying. The king is additionally crushed by the sight and tumbles to his knees in the last scene. Violet turns into the queen of the kingdom and the film ends here. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.